Welcome to Tile Basics Session 8, Calculations in Exporting Data. What I'd like to start with in this session is something that I described in earlier sessions, but we didn't show it on the fly uh, as I've been going through and recording all of the sessions, so I want to make sure it's clear here. When you run the sweep actions, inside in the data tab, there's all kinds of calculations that can be run on the fly. And one thing we need to do to make these graphs update automatically is make sure that we put in the uh, items required to be calculated as the test runs. So, and the order is very important. So this flow, when the test takes a sweep, it's going to run these calculations. It's going to correct the data. Then it's going to do our bandwidth peak scan using S peaks then it's going to do the over limit equation. And then once it has the over limit equation, it can feed the margin equation and determine what the delta to the limit is. All of this information goes into the tables at the end. So it's important that when the test is run, they're calculated on the fly. So each of the actions needs to have the appropriate data items in the correct order in them you know, the correct equations in the calculated data array. The reason that's important is when each time you rerun the test, it's going to overwrite the data. It's also a good discipline to clear all the data when you select clear to have all the data in the equations clear out as well. So now if we run the, run the profile and we go to clear data, we can see that the tab, graphs and tables have completely emptied. And if I go to run test and I go choose horizontal, it will go repopulate the graph and it repopulates the horizontal table. The vertical graph and vertical table are still empty. If I go back and run vertical, then they will then populate as well. And all of this is handled on the fly as the test runs. So it's, it's very fast particularly if you have a time domain device you're measuring with, you can get an extraordinary amount of data very quickly. So wanted to just make sure we, we reviewed that. What we'll go to next is exporting the data. And this can be, it's, it's not difficult, but I just wanna make sure that everything is clear. When you export the data, whatever is in the name of the item it's going to be that name. So let's show a process here. Let's go to the palette. And down in this path, I've left this path blank until now. We're going to take the save item, the save uh, action, the auto save, and we're going to just have it prompt for a file name, okay? And we'll just call this S1. And then the next thing downstream is going to be the save windows icon, which we'll put over here. And we'll literally call that the export because that's literally what it does. And when we export, we can select the graphs and tables that we want to export. So now we can select the two graphs, the two tables. If we want to, we could even just do a raw data, it's the CSVs of the raw data or the corrected data. In this case, I selected the corrected data. And here's where it gets interesting. So when you feed a directory, you, you feed a directory through to this action. So wherever, whatever directory it's pointing to when you come into this action is the directory where it will put things. So what can happen, you can select a path here or we can select use current file path. Now what's interesting about that is when this flow comes through, okay, we're going to go to the save. And when we save here, we do a save as we're creating the file path that goes into the save windows action. It gets carried through to this action. So if we create a directory using the profile name to dump the data in and we overwrite any data, then each time we rerun and, and run it again, it'll overwrite. The beauty of it is when you're actually testing in your lab, if you do your tests and you save your profiles, let's say for RE, you'd say RE 
then the model number of the unit dash the serial number of the unit, what you would have then is you'd have a unique file name for every device you tested. And so when you save the profile, then this would create a directory using that name. You'd have the profile and a directory with all the data in the same directory as the profile. So let's check this out. Um, we're going to default to the EMF format for graphs and CSVs for data and tables. And then we'll also connect this through to the export. So what I'm going to do is run this. We already have all the data we need. I'll run this and I'll select export data. It'll prompt me for a place to save the file name. So what I'm going to do is just go to my documents. In fact, I'll, I'll go to the computer documents. I'm going to create a folder that doesn't even exist. I'm just going to create a folder and call it AAA. Okay. And then I'm going to open that folder and I'm going to save RE demo inside of it. So it saves RE demo. It goes to the export and it resumes pretty quick. So if I go, if I open my Explorer, I go to documents and I find the folder called AAA, which is right here now. I can see that RE demo is in there. And then in a folder called RE demo are all these graphs, graphs, tables. So when you open the table in CSV format, it looks like this. You have to, you know, do a little bit of adjustment, but it's all in there. Okay. Path loss, raw data, margin, limit. It's all in there and it can be imported into other documentation. You know, it can be imported into Word, other Excel files, what have you. And then you've also got your graphs in EMF format. And what's neat about that is when you put it into Word, you can grab the, the, um, the perimeter of the picture, you can drag it in and out, you can do different things with it. So there's the graph. In fact, let me open that again. I want to make sure, yes, our file name and timestamp and everything is at the bottom. It's a really, really decent looking graph. Really good, good out export. So that is how we export the data. And really, we're, we're really complete with the basics of tile at this point. Um, there will be other videos getting made for more intermediate and advanced things, but this really concludes what we go over in the basics training. Um, I appreciate you being here. I hope that you got a lot out of these videos and uh, wish that you have a, a great day and, and be safe. Take care.